what, uh, what is the mind? So it's uh, ego and mind working on its own. Mm -hmm. But what is it? If it's not you, what is it? Yes, very good, very good question. In the capacity of the consciousness, when the soul is conditioned and focused on matter, the mind is an extension of its conditional projection and starts working in the world of combining the sensual senses with essential objects with the help of the assistant of the intelligence, which is another expansion of consciousness. And when the soul gets on top of that mountain, mind and intelligence have reached together there and therefore they stop giving trouble. They purify themselves. It's like in the moment of death, when the physical body dies, the soul, the ahankar, the ego, the buddhi, the intelligence, and mana, the mind, they all leave the body together. The mana, intelligence, and the ego, they are comprised in what we call an astral. Uh, astral body, or oh, this is like a, like a, the, the, the gross body and the subtle, the linga sarila it's called, the linga is, is, is a subtle body, but it's subtle and at the same time spiritual of nature once liberated from the conditioning. So the key thing is there in the ego, because the ego is, you turn this way, universal love, you turn that way, ego projects. So in this say the mountain is an example, an analogy only, no? It's the focus, it's the consciousness. How you, how you project. So in this way, mind and intelligence are very complex and they have been studied a lot in the Vedas and they have, like Krishna says for example, your mind can be the best friend of yours and can be the worst enemy. Just depends how you're gonna catch the rains. It's like the rains. The mind is the rains. The intelligence is a driver and the senses are tied to the rains. descriptions coming straight out of the Bhagavad Gita. The secret of love is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. And the secret music of the soul comes straight out of the flute of Sri Krishna and all the Vedic sounds. <laughs>